Hey guys, I know it's going to be kind of hard for you to hear me, but uh, today we're going to be looking at one of these ant miners and we're going to show you how to set this up. Here you have a uh, L3, an S9, and an S7, and they're pretty standard. Uh, I'm setting them up and we're going to go on the web interface now and I'll show you how to configure them and get it set up. So the first thing you want to do is obviously hook up your power supply, connect each six pin power connector to the board. Then you're going to plug in your ethernet cable and power it up. And you will hear a uh, beeping noise because it's not configured yet. And let's go on to the uh, web interface and I'll show you how to get that done. All right, you guys, this audio quality is going to be definitely a lot better. So sorry about how loud and distorted that audio was. It's just when you're in a server room and you got AC vents blowing, fans blowing everywhere, you know, it gets very loud and it's hard to get good audio quality in those kind of environments. So let's go ahead and uh, do an IP scan. So what we're basically doing is downloading this piece of software, installing it, running it, and scanning our network for that IP address because sometimes they do come uh, DHCP, but sometimes they come as a static IP. So if it comes as a static IP, uh, usually this default static IP is 192.168.1.99. And if your network is that range, then you're fine because then you can just open up your um, advanced IP scanner here and you could just type in, you know, 192 and scan it for that range. Um, but unfortunately, uh, sometimes if it's a DHCP or, or static and you have a different network, you're going to have to set yourself a static IP. So to set that up, you just need to go to uh, control panel and you need to go to network and sharing center and then do change adapter settings. And then you right click on your network adapter and go to properties. And then click on internet protocol version four. And this is where you were typing, I'm not gonna do this because I've already changed uh, my ant miners to my subnet, but you would kind of change it to like, you know, 192.168.1.50. And then when you hit okay, then you can connect via a web browser uh, by just typing in um, the static IP for the miner, which is that. And of course it's not gonna load for me because I've already changed the IP address to my uh, network. Once you get it onto your network or your subnet, whatever IP range your subnet is, then you can go ahead and browse to it. And then uh, you can go into the network area and then you can change it from DHCP to static or however you want it. I have mine set DHCP because I have software that monitors it. So the IP address doesn't need to be really static for me, at least for in my environment. So the important thing is to go to system and check your hardware version because you can go to Ant Manor's website uh, and to see if there's the latest firmware version. Sometimes they have bug fixes, things like that. So that's a good thing to check. Um, but the second important thing is go to mining configuration and this is where we can set up our pool configuration. Now you can see here, I'm connected to the Ant Pools uh, pool and that's the URL for uh, mining Litecoin because this is actually a Litecoin uh, miner. You can see if I go back to system overview, it's Ant Miner L3 Plus. So of course it's going to be mining Litecoin. So this is the pool, these URLs here, and then of course you're going to put in your username and then it's usually username, period, the number of miners you have. So let's say you have three of these Litecoin miners. Then you would have your username, dot one, dot two, dot three for each of those miners and so on, depending on how many miners you have. So you can tell each one uh, apart from another. Now the next thing you want to set up here is stop running when the temperature is over 80 Celsius. You definitely want that checked because that will stop your machine in case one of the fans fails, something happens, it doesn't get overheated. I've seen it work sometimes not. So I definitely want to have that checked. You can also customize the fan speed here, which is a nice feature, um, but I usually just leave it to the defaults. Now when you go into the advanced settings, you have to be very careful here. If you're overclocking your miner, um, it's going to draw more power. It's going to, the wear and tear on it's going to be a lot less, um, which means it's not going to last as long as it normally should. So just be careful about that. I do have mine overclocked a little bit. I think it comes standard at uh, 378, but I'm not sure on that. Um, but I have mine um, set up for uh, 412. And that's using a lot more power. That's using about 120 watts more than it standard came with. The uh, third thing you want to do, once you get your uh, 
pool setting set up and like I said these settings you can find if you go to, if you're mining at least with ant pool when you log into your profile you can see your pool settings there you can just copy those inform that information into there and then once you save that information you definitely want to go to system go to reboot and reboot your system and to make sure it's working go to minor status and you can see the uptime you can see the hash rate you can see what pool it's connected to if there's any dropped uh, packets or anything like that you can kind of see or rejected uh, things here you can see that are discarded um, and you can see all your ASIC status chips are all zero which is good if it's set to uh, if it's shown in X um, that means that chip is either fried dead or it's not responding so um, then you're going to lose hash rate that way so that's something to keep an eye on plus you can see your fan speeds the current RPMs uh, which is nice um, but yeah that's pretty much it you guys it's very basic um, once you log in, just set your pool settings, um, set for a static IP if you need to, or just DHCP, um, just depends on your environment, um, but that's as simple as it gets. Thanks for watching, you guys. Hope this video was helpful. See you in the next video.